Hey y'all, Sandy Peterson here, but I guess you probably know that if you signed in up for this. So one of the best sources for horror ideas are folk stories about creepy happenings in your own country. Now, in the 1930s and 40s, movie horror was portrayed as mostly European legends. We'd have vampires or werewolves or from books by European authors like Frankenstein or Phantom of the Opera. What we didn't draw from were American sources. We had movies about Jack the Ripper, but not about the New Orleans Axeman or H.H. H. Holmes and the Chicago Death Castle. Both of these guys killed more people than the Ripper and possibly more hideously. <laughs> Now, in the 1950s and 60s, we still weren't using American sources, really. We had creatures from mad science or outer space or both, like in this image. Now, Japan was different. They started doing horror in the 60s, and usually they stuck with native Japanese legends. They still do, though now it's not so much ancient stories as modern urban legends like the slip-mouthed woman or toilet hanako. Filmmakers really didn't start to use American legends and monsters till the 1990s, starting with the Chupacabra and the Wendigo. I remember being very excited when I saw my first Wendigo movie, because at last we had a monster from the Americas. I was also excited at first to see my first Chupacabra movie, but then it turned out that basically all Chupacabra movies in the 90s were abysmal. Oh well. But the Chupacabra and the Wendigo are pretty mainstream. They're quite well known. So I'm starting a series here called American Horror, or American Terrors, in which I talk over some creepy and terrifying tales from the United States. You can use the ideas I'm talking about here for Call of Cthulhu adventures, to write a scary story for publication, or as the nugget behind a campfire tale to tell kids or grown-ups. How you use this information is up to you. I think it's interesting. If you want more information on these subjects, you can probably find tediously long videos about them in excruciating detail. I'm just going to give you the high points. Without further ado, let's talk about the unusual, even inexplicable tale of Crybaby Bridge. Crybaby Bridge. So as you see from the picture, this is a bridge not too close to town. When you go walking out on the bridge at night, sometimes you can hear a baby crying. That in itself is pretty scary. The baby cry has been heard night after night for years. Usually there's a legend about the bridge, almost always something about a girl who killed her baby and then herself on the bridge. But there are never any facts to back this up. And in fact, if you had to make up a random story to explain a, a, a ghostly baby crying at a bridge, that's probably what you would make up. So I don't believe that story. It's just the story that you'd make up. But even more scary is the fact that as you're seeing these different images, these are all different bridges. There are a lot of crybaby bridges in the United States, not just one. This is another reason to believe that the girl who killed her baby is not the real story. Would that happen in all these places? These bridges are all over. They're in Illinois, Oklahoma, Pennsylvania, Maryland. And if you're wondering, all these pictures I'm showing you are actual crybaby bridges, not just like random old bridges that look spooky. These are the real deal. <laughs> The question then becomes, what the heck is going on? This is not just an urban legend. The crying sound is well attested in these areas, and there's no evidence that the people who live near crybaby bridge sites know about the existence of other such bridges. They came up with the names independently. It's an obvious sound name to call a bridge if you hear a baby crying. So they can't be just dismissed as ghost stories. For one thing, no one ever also sees a ghost on a crybaby bridge. It's just the crying. Eerie. Now you can see that all these bridges are pretty old. They're always on narrow rural roads, but they're pretty different construction. Well, I see it's... I guess it's theoretically possible that all these bridges make a creaking noise that sounds like a baby. It seems unlikely, particularly because they say that the crying sound doesn't come from the bridge structure itself, but from underneath the bridge or down in the creek or ditch or whatever the bridge passes over. Could it be an animal? A fox's bark can sound like a human scream, and raccoons and dying rabbits can make sounds a little like a baby, but not that much. Plus, people who live in rural areas would have heard foxes, raccoons and rabbits. It wouldn't fool them. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that the answer is something supernatural. All I'm claiming is that the usual stock easy answers don't hold up, so it's something different. A ghost? I don't think so. It's kind of rare for a girl to throw a baby off a bridge. Plus, ghosts usually also show up spectrally or there's lights or something, and these aren't seen. The scariest idea 
is that perhaps it's some entity trying to mimic a crying baby to get the unwary to climb down off the bridge looking for the infant. Then it strikes. That's my idea. You can use it or come up with your own even more terrifying explanation. Like me? Click for notifications? And if you want to support me and help me do more videos, you can buy my stuff like this thing they're showing right now. Thanks.